My name is Benai Kim Kromwa. I'm the current chairman of Robbins Rancheria. I've seen the growth with other tribes, with uh, county officials, state officials, and even national officials. Our goal at Robinson Rancheria is to help Clear Lake become Clear Lake again. Uh, it's lost its identity for a lot of reasons, as we know, um, but those could be remedied in our heart, and that, those are our responsibilities of being the ancestral inheritors of this land. And so with that responsibility um, come, how are we going to do it? What opportunities do we have in bridging those opportunities? When you can start helping your homeland and the land itself, whether it be uh, taking care of it, acquiring it, getting grants to clean it, um, as well as the um, cooperative grants that we have with other tribes in the county, that's where work and government and tribe and responsibility come together. And it's just an honor to be a part of it, to see these grants in action of, um, of removing invasive uh, fish in our, in our lakes to help our um, indigenous um, spawning of our chai, uh, of our birds, and then the other fish that, that, that are from here. Um, so it's just, it's just been an honor to see this growth, to be on the, um, be right there uh, where you can see it happening. You can see the tribes working together. You can see the county coming together with meetings. Um, just, an, just a great opportunity to be a part of. The lake itself is just extraordinary. I'm a, I'm a water person. I'm a scuba diver and a sailor. Um, I, uh, I've become a fisherman of late and I've uh, been out bass fishing on the lake. Um, and it's just extraordinary. Uh, you know, I always find that uh, people often who live near water don't actually go, ever get out on it. You know, there are a lot of folks who just don't have the resources to have the, uh, you know, and the parents have the time off to take them out and explore these water bodies. I, I couldn't be happier if I'm in, under, on the water. Um, and what people don't know is that the perspective on a place is completely different when you're on the water looking at the land than when you're on the land looking at the water. So, uh, you know, getting on a boat, getting out in the middle of Clear Lake um, helps you understand the scale of the lake. It's a very big lake. Um, it's one of the oldest and biggest freshwater lakes and shallow freshwater lakes uh, in the U.S. The geography around the lake is extraordinary, particularly when you see it from the lake. This is the root cause based on laboratory, based on field data, based on modeling data, is the loss of oxygen and what that does to the bottom of the lake. We're addressing that root cause. A Band-Aid is when you don't address the root cause and you just try to somehow temporarily fix it. This is the root cause. And then the lake will start to naturally heal itself, but with the addition uh, of oxygen. What we don't know is how long it has to be applied for. And that affects the economics. So not a, not a band aid. It really is working with the system as it is. My name is Alicia Cortez. I'm a researcher at UC Davis, and I also work for the Tahoe Environmental Research Center. And I've been working in Clear Lake for the past five years. And um, pretty much one of the reasons that made me interested and also attract me to come to Clear Lake it's how unique is this system so it's uh, the largest lake in uh, California is the oldest lake in North America but also it's essential for all the communities around Clear Lake so looking at the lake right now it looks very beautiful right but it, it has many problems related with water quality and as a water resources engineer, I, I, really, I really feel that we, we really need to do something to try to improve it and make sure that the lake is healthy for many years to come for the community. Much of what pesters people is a source of fascination and wonder for biologists. So these uh, flights of gnats, uh, midges and whatnot, the absolute amazing number of uh, of rice flies and uh, phantom midges that come out of the lake fascinate me uh, and, and reflects, uh, reflects this remarkable productivity. It's not what you may want, but it's what the system produces, and it produces it in amazing, amazing abundance. So this amazing productivity in forms that you may not appreciate is going to supply the energy, the food, for the things that you can appreciate, the birds and uh and everything else. 
in any kind of pest management, if you think of algae, if you think of cyanobacteria as a pest, any kind of pest management, what do you do? You try. You don't just kill the pest and leave the condition the same. You have to understand the conditions that's attracting the pest, right? What are the What are the conditions that attract the cyanobacteria pest? It's phosphorus and iron. Where does phosphorus and iron come from? The surrounding soils. These vac these volcanic soils are loaded with both phosphorus and iron, and it's transported in sediment. What's the greatest source of sediment in California in any forested situation? It's roads. Road-related erosional sediment is the number one transport mechanism to move dirt off the hills into a water body, whether it's a stream, whether it's a creek, whether it's a river, or whether it's a lake. So ID identifying the source of that erosional sediment and what drives it has gotten places like Clear Lake and the Forest Service to start moving towards eliminating or at least reducing as much road-related sediment as possible. That's, that's how you move things in a, in a positive direction. Clear Lake is not out of balance. Clear Lake is responding to the conditions that are there now. Okay, Like I say, in 1969, you couldn't see two inches into the water. It was pea soup. And you can watch the data over time as, as management, as water quality, as water treatment improved, as old septic systems were replaced, that water has gotten clearer and clearer and clearer. What's the result of clear water? Everybody wants clear water. Now everybody's complaining about weeds. As I said before, why do you have why do you have aquatic weed growth? Because you have warm water, you have light, and you have nutrients. Don't overthink it, folks. It's that simple. There's a lot of projects that different entities are doing, agencies, tribes, whatever it may be. So this project right here is actually Hippon Mitsopoma of Upper Lakes project, and it's their pit tagging project. And so Thankfully enough, we're able to help them um, with that project. The plan is, is pit tag a lot of fishes and see which ones are migrating up the streams. My name is Sarah Ryan. I'm the Environmental Director and Emergency Management Director for the Big Valley Band of Pomo Indians. Our program on Clear Lake has to do with surface water monitoring, mitigation measures like tule replanting. Uh, we're paying attention to what herbicides are being used on the lake. We're looking at water chemistry trends. We're looking at the at cyanobacteria issues and it's a lot of fun. It's, it's great work. Um, the tribe is very involved in the activities that we do having to do with monitoring and other, um, other activities. Because Clear Lake is so different, we don't have a surefire silver bullet method of addressing issues that we see in the lake, such as over nutrient. So she's hyper eutrophic, which means there's too many nutrients, too many good stuff that's produced in the lake. It's a good thing for fisheries. So we have a world-class fishery and that's because we have so much food that's being grown in Clear Lake. She's shallow, she's got a lot of nutrients. There's so much of that food web that's being built that there's so much for fish to eat and that's why people come from all over to go fishing in Clear Lake. And those same things that make that lake so prolific for fisheries are the same things that add to those large harmful algal blooms that we see in the summer and fall that can create noxious smells, can cause health hazards if we're recreating, but it's also why we have so much wildlife and birds and cool fish species and so much productivity in the lake. It's the same things. If you go to manage the productivity in the lake to get rid of those harmful algal blooms, you're also going to be getting rid of those things that produce that food web that's necessary for those fisheries and for all the wildlife and all that productivity. So if you manage all the nutrients that are driving the cyanobacteria, you're going to be also reducing the things that we need for the productivity for the ecosystem as we know it. So what's the answer? There's not one thing. There's not even two things. There's probably a hundred different things that all have to work together and have to work together for a long time in order for this lake to basically get back to its balance of what it was, you know, 500 years ago, 200 years ago, and what we see as a lake with no issues. And I don't know if that's what Clear Lake is, and part of the science symposium, and part of us having research here on the lake, is that we can really get all of this information together one spot, figure out what we know, what we don't know, what we need to do in the next 5, 10, 15, 100 years 
to really understand and manage Clear Lake. So Clear Lake can be the best that Clear Lake can be. Not what we see Clear Lake is the best, but what Clear Lake actually wants to be and can be.